All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, a powerlifting story. And this one's a really big deal. So Julius Maddox, we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks now. His upcoming 800-pound raw bench press world record attempt is coming up, and it's this Saturday. And as of the time that I'm recording this video, it's Friday, August 20th. Tomorrow is this attempt on Saturday, August 21st. So we could possibly be less than 24 hours away from seeing a new bench press world record set by Julius and broken by Julius. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out here is that apparently this world record attempt is going to take place at Wrigley Field. This is going to be sanctioned by the WRPF powerlifting organization. And also, apparently, will be televised live on the Marquee Network. And this is going to be between 6.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. on Wrigley Field. So I just wanted to let you guys know, if you did not know already, the time and the place. If you want to tune in and support Julius um, on this 800-pound attempt and give this video a thumbs up, wish him some good luck in the comments down below if you think he's going to get that 800-pound bench tomorrow, Saturday, August 21st. Shout out to Julius, getting the world and sport of powerlifting into a more mainstream um, audience, I guess you could call it, doing big things. Now, next up in the news, let's get straight into some physique updates here. Lord Jones, aka Brian Jones, a top classic physique competitor um, from a finishing standpoint at last year's Olympia, caught a lot of people by surprise. Taking the fifth place spot at the 2020 Olympia, a lot of people talking about Brian Jones as potentially one of the up-and-comers that may be able to rival Chris Bumstead one day, who thus far has seemed like he's virtually unrivaled. And one of the things that seems to be impressing a lot of people, myself included, about Brian Jones's physique is not only does he have a really classic structure, the small waist, the V-taper, all the things that you would hope to see in classic physique and would like to see in men's open bodybuilding a little bit more frequently. So Brian has all that, the crazy small waist, the V taper, the wide flaring lats in the front poses like you can see here in the front double bicep, but he's also got a ton of size. And he reminds me in a way of Chris Bumstead because one of the things that's so dominant about Chris is he's got a taller frame, a bigger frame, so his weight limit is a little bit more. He carries a ton of size on his frame and still maintains all these classic attributes. Well, Brian is pretty much doing the same thing that Chris is doing. He's taller. He's got a bigger frame. He's got a little bit more of a weight allotment than the shorter guys. And he's really, really filled out that frame. I think he's a really dominant guy. He's almost got the size to the point where he looks like a men's open bodybuilder, but with classic proportions. This is the guy to be watching at this year's Olympia. As an up-and-comer, but also as a dark horse, he was fifth last year. I'm going to predict that he improves upon last year's placing and moves up from fifth. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Classic Physique Olympia predictions down below. All right, now next up in the news, it looks like we've got a little bit of a sad story for you guys today. Uh, as I was recording this video, I just saw it posted on uh, Instagram that former professional bodybuilder Phil Hernan just passed away. So Phil was really a mass monster for his era. Um, one of the more noteworthy wins that he had was when he was still in the NPC, he beat Craig Titus. Now, you guys know about Craig Titus, but despite his legal issues, Craig Titus went on to be a very successful IFBB pro. Um, so this was a big accolade for Phil that he had beaten Craig when they were both heavyweights in the NPC. And if you guys want to learn more about Phil Hernan or do like an old school deep dive, I actually did a video about Phil like four or five years ago. I'll show it on screen here. Um, I believe it was called a forgotten mass monster. Now I don't have any information on Phil's actual cause of death. I believe he had some kidney issues um, in the earlier 2000s. But yeah, I definitely wanted to include that in this video because Phil, um, had he had a really tremendous physique for that era in the 90s. And I was really sad when I saw that he passed away because, I mean, he's a younger guy. We've seen so many guys over the past few months, um, so many bodybuilders, so many athletes in the IFBB or former IFBB pros um, have been passing away. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of sad to see. It's really sad to see. But anyway, in honor of Phil, if you guys hadn't heard about him, because I'm sure a lot of you had not, 
Google some pictures of what his physique looked like. I showed you guys some here on screen, but um, Google some pictures of Phil Hernan, bodybuilder, and you can see what I'm talking about with how impressive he was from a size standpoint. Now, next up in the news, we've got some physique updates from Nick Walker at five weeks out from the Arnold Classic coming up on September 25th. Nick Walker, the 2020 New York Pro Champion, and the Arnold Classic will be only his third pro show ever, counting the Chicago Pro, the New York Pro, and then the Arnold falling in that third place spot. And as a lot of you guys probably already know, Nick is actually a fan favorite to win the Arnold Classic, a lot of people going into this show, there's a lot of hype for Nick Walker. I've been seeing it in my comment sections. I've been seeing it in my DMs. A lot of people are really hyped on this new, young, up-and-comer that's got a ton of size. I mean, he's like a miniature mass monster. For his height, he is a massive dude. And I think one of the things that really impressed people about Nick, because they already knew about the size. They saw the physique updates. They saw the training videos. They knew this kid, was he was crazy big. But when they saw the conditioning that he brought at the New York Pro, he was separated, he was detailed. It made him even more impressive that we knew right off the bat he could come to a pro show in shape enough to beat relatively staple pros, guys that have been around for a while. And looking at these physique updates, I firmly believe he's on track to bring similar conditioning, a similar package, hopefully better conditioning, um, than he brought at the New York Pro. And that was what impressed a lot of people. So if he can do that at the Arnold, I think he's going to make a bold statement. And I'm going to predict now, I'm not going to predict a victory because that's very ballsy. I'm going to predict he's in the first call out at the Arnold Classic. I'm a huge fan of Nick's physique. I like the amount of muscle that he brings to the stage at such a young age. I like how much improvement he made from Chicago to New York. I like the condition he came in at New York. The only thing with Nick I want to watch is as long as he keeps controlling the midsection, in between the poses, controlling his breathing on stage, he'll be fine. New York conditioning or better and controlling the midsection, if he can do those two things and he can do them consistently, He's going to be a very dominant factor in the IFBB. Now, the last two stories I wanted to mention in this video are two of the responses um, to the Arnold Schwarzenegger situation that surprised me the most. Or I guess I could say the ones that seem to send the biggest shockwaves and have the biggest impact on the fitness industry. Because as you guys know, this has been no small topic of discussion. Everybody is talking about this. Every YouTube channel, everybody in the industry is reacting. And some of these big names that are having these profound reactions are actually pretty surprising to me. Um, and one of them, Callum Von Moger. And the reason why that was a big one for me um, is because Callum played Arnold. His character was Arnold in the movie Bigger, which was essentially a documentary about the legacy of Joe Weider. So Callum Von Moger put up this post in this clip side by side. Um, him and Arnold, kind of this split picture where they look very similar and then if you swipe over, it's the video of Arnold, the Screw Your Freedom video. Not just to think about, well, my freedom is being kind of disturbed here. No, screw your freedom. You know, I've always been a big fan of Arnold's. You know, I grew up watching his movies and he inspired me, you know, to, to, to get into bodybuilding and, and competing and everything. But um, the Arnold we knew then is different from the Arnold that we see today. And unfortunately I made the decision to remove all of his posters off of my wall and uh chuck them out because recently in an interview and he could have i think he really i think it was just a poor choice of words but quote screw your freedom was what he said you know and I can't support someone that doesn't support our freedom. So, no longer a fan. So. And Callum says, I'll always remember the Arnold that inspired us to train hard, believe in ourselves, and follow our dreams, but I can no longer support the Arnold that speaks to us today. I say, fight for your freedom. Hashtag, power to the people. So that one I thought was pretty impactful and pretty profound, like I said, because he spent so much time basically becoming the embodiment of Arnold for that movie. So that one was surprising. And then the other one that was pretty big was Brian Shaw. And the reason why that was a big one for me is because Brian Shaw has won Arnold's competition, the Arnold Strongman Classic. He's competed in that competition 
more times than I can even count. Brian Shaw was like the main attraction at that event, that portion of the Arnold, for such a long time. I thought I almost thought him and Arnold were like close personal friends because he had done that show so many times. So after that clip came out of Arnold, Brian Shaw even took down the picture of Arnold hanging in his gym. And I'll roll that clip for you guys at the end of this video. What's up, guys? As many of you know, I am a proud American. I train with an American flag on the wall of my gym, and I'm also a big believer in freedom. Now, there are a lot of people in our country right now that have forgotten that freedom is very important. Also, I have trained with a picture or poster of Arnold Schwarzenegger on the wall of my gym basically since I started training because Arnold was a huge influence on me. Now, Arnold has made some comments recently, and he is free to say whatever he wants to say, but when you say something like, screw your freedom, it doesn't sit well with me, and I know it doesn't sit well with a lot of other Americans out there, and therefore, I will no longer be training with a poster of Arnold on the wall of my gym. It's time for it to come down. Um, but these are just two of the ones that really seemed the biggest to me. So for anyone that thinks this isn't really a huge deal, it seems like as far as the fitness industry is concerned, um, some of these reactions are big and unexpected ones. So this thing seems to be having real repercussions. And I think this is the last video I'm going to do on the topic because we've given it context. We've shown both sides of the stories. And now we've shown some of the biggest reactions in the industry to the, to the stories and really, I think it's just time to let this thing play out and see what happens because I don't think there's really going to be any more news related to this that needs to be covered. You guys now know the full situation. You guys know the full context and you guys have drawn the opinions that you're going to draw from it. And as always, I would encourage you guys to discuss and debate and have intellectual conversations in the comments below. And just like with any topic that is pertaining to something that is heavily politicized or divisive, I will not be giving my opinion or commenting on the situation, but I will let you guys, to the max extent of the comment section, express your opinions and argue or whatever. I will not be moderating, I will not be censoring, but I will not be responding either in the comments down below. I'm not weighing in on this discussion. I've learned, and I think a lot of you guys would agree with me on this, People don't come to bodybuilding YouTube channels or bodybuilders or fitness influencers to hear their opinions on politics or to hear their take on a political issue. But sometimes just reporting on the political issue, if it's impactful enough to the industry, if you can do that in a non-biased way, I think there is some room for that. But no one wants to hear my opinion on politics. No one wants to hear probably any other bodybuilder's opinion on politics. And I think that's what this issue largely is, is a political one. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did in fact enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, feel free to donate a like to this video. It's free. All it takes is the click of a mouse to click that like button. It helps out a ton with the algorithm. It helps out a ton getting this video, more views, more shares, all that good stuff. All you got to do is like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you receive a notification whenever I post the latest news. Now, I know that was a longer outro, but I just wanted to make sure everything got said, everything was clear. And I want you guys to know I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Regardless of what your opinion is, either way on these issues, I appreciate having all of your support. Regardless of what political side of the spectrum you're from, regardless of how you feel about vaccines or whatever, I love all you guys. Glad to have all you guys here. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.